Hello and welcome to the speed run video. In this video, we're going to be seeing how quickly we can go from a fresh Ubuntu install on a server to a functioning LND lightning node. Hi, I'm Hannah and today we have with us Leo. Hi all. So what Leo's going to be demoing for us is how to take this fresh Ubuntu server, brand new, and then turn it all the way into a functioning LND lightning node. And we're gonna do this all uncut, unedited, so you can see every step along the way. Leo's going to be using LitD in integrated mode. So that comes bundled with a whole bunch of things, including LND. And so we'll download that um, and run LND there. We'll run it in neutrino mode so we can get up and running very quickly. And then once that's up and running, we'll use LNC, lightning node connect, to connect to terminal web where we can walk through how we can make use of loop and pool to then manage that node. So I will go ahead and hand it over to Leo. This is our VPS. Uh, we just set it up on Luna node. It's an M2 instance that so costs about seven US dollars per month. Um, and um, it has only two gigabyte of RAM and one virtual CPU. So this is about at the lower end of what we'd recommend for LitD, um, but generally works quite smoothly on it. Um, and it shows how not just how fast it is to set up um, LitD on this device, uh, but also how uh, economical it can be. Um, so often what I do in these new um, VPS is I just update it and upgrade it um, just to make sure that um, all the packages are kind of up to date and we don't run into any issues that could be solved with a simple um, update. Um, next, we're going to the Lightning Labs um, GitHub page where we can find the Lightning Terminal code. Um, so here, everything that we're gonna be running is open source. Um, and um, under releases, we can see that only last week, um, the 0 0.11 um, was uh, released, which bundles LND uh, 017, uh, Taproot Assets, Loop, Pool, and Faraday. Um, we're not going to be uh, skipping anything, not going to skip any corners here. Um, we're going to verify that this um, um, that the software really is like properly signed. Um, that we're not here subject to any man in the middle attacks. Uh, so we download the PGP key of uh, Victor um, before we find the um, the binaries that we need. So this tarball AMD64, that's the one we need. Um, so just with wget should just take a second. Um, we also need the um, signed manifest. Um, so this is the signature and the manifest itself here. Um, again, they're quite light, so they should um, download immediately. We are going to verify that this manifest is properly uh, signed by Victor, which we do with PGP verify. Here, good signature from Victor, um, that kind of gives us the assurance that um, he signed this manifest, but we also need to actually look into the manifest um, because elsewhere, else how do we know whether we downloaded the right uh, binary? Um, we also need to calculate the SHA-256 sums of the tarball. And now this sum needs to match uh, this up here. And I believe it does. Um, so that uh, allows us now to um, continue in good conscience with um, uh, extracting um, this tarball. Command line is a bit sluggish today, um, but extracting should be quickly. So you find here, this is the uh, LitD binary that we're going to run. And here are all the CLI command line interfaces for the various utilities. Um, to install this, uh, we only need to move these binaries to somewhere where our operating system can find it. I'm choosing user local bin. Again, moving these files um, should be quite fast. And now before we can run this, we need to make the .lit directory and place a lit config file into um, this directory. 
And I do have a config file here prepared. I'm gonna walk you through it in a second. Um, but before I'm going to use the opportunity to run libd right away so that we can start syncing to um, the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, now, looking at this config file, um, the most important aspects are um, the first line kind of tells libd that we want to display the user interface, not just to um, localhost users, but to users in general, and that we need that because we're running on a VPS. Um, we have a UI password here. Um, when you repeat this at home, please do create a proper password. Use your password manager. You choose something that's long and unique and random. Um, because otherwise others are going to get access to your user interface and from the user interface you can control kind of sessions and admin keys and that is, uh, essentially gives others cont full control of your node. Um, we're running an integrated mode, meaning we're running a single binary um, for, yeah, for including L&D. Um, we're running on Bitcoin, of course, on mainnet. And um, we're using the Neutrino uh, backend, which means we don't run Bitcoin Core on our machine. Um, instead, we connect to the global Bitcoin network and use, uh, and use that. Um, because Neutrino doesn't have a mempool, we need to get uh, fee estimates from elsewhere. So in this case, we uh, fetch the fee estimates as a JSON file uh, once in a while. And this is a great uh, way to get started with a lightning node um, if you do want to move to a your own bitcoin core backend um, then you can do that um, in the background now you can install bitcoin core you can start syncing it um, on this machine it might take a week or two um, but once it's done syncing you're able to move your libd node, node over and kind of benefit from the um, increased availability and additional verification on um, on your own node. Um, these options are relatively useful if you want to use uh, zero conf channels. Um, zero conf channels uh, are channels that immediately become usable once they have been broadcast, um, rather than um, waiting, having to wait for confirmations. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create um, a wallet um, for which we again need a password so again choose a password that is strong and random and use a password manager um, this is the password used to encrypt your wallet uh, file um, meaning if somebody were to get access to this node and is able to fetch and steal this wallet database then um, if you choose a good password they're still not able to take your bitcoin um, the seed phrase we want a new seed phrase um, we're not going to encrypt it with an additional uh, passphrase but you do have this option and the, um, the cipher seed, um, that's kind of the most holy part of your node. Um, do save it somewhere. Uh, ideally, um, write it down uh, on paper with a pencil. Um, you could put it in your password manager, but ideally just keep it somewhere offline. Um, don't do it like I do and just paste it into your, um, into your keypad. Um, so now that uh, we have a wallet, we are able to uh, check on our sync status. And just looking here left at the um, output, um, I do believe we are synced to chain. Um, and yes, we are. Um, we can also, so that means we are able to pretty much use the node now. We are able to send funds to it. We're able to send funds out of it. We're able to open channels and accept channels. What we're not yet able to do is make payments. Um, even if we had a channel, because we do not have kind of a good view over what the Lightning Network looks like, but we are learning about it fast. Uh, so we already learned about um, 7,000 nodes. That's uh, almost half of the total network. Um, so by the time I show off the next step, we might already be um, synced to the graph as well. Um, so now to access the UI, we need to um, make sure that this port is open. Um, if we're using a um, if we're using a firewall, um, we are going to be faced with this warning every time um, because we're unable to obtain a proper TLS certificate for this IP address. Uh, if we were to um, point a domain name at this IP address, uh, then and then we'd be able to get a proper TLS certificate, and then we also wouldn't see the warning. 
um, we, if we are concerned, we can manually kind of compare the TLS fingerprint. Um, here, we need the password from our UI. Um, and this allows us, this, uh, this is the um, LitD UI. Um, we already have some access to some tools here, um, Lightning Node Connect, maybe most importantly. Um, but ideally, this button here um, will just let us connect to a terminal. Um, and terminal, terminal Web is uh, the, um, the tool we use to um, kind of look, check out our node, um, look at the, um, our liquidity, um, perform, uh, perform loops and buy channels and pool. Um, we're also able to use this to deposit on-chain funds and withdraw on-chain funds. This is our pairing freeze. That's, this uh, can only be used once. Um, and again, we need a password. Um, this password um, is used to encrypt the data in the browser um, so that yeah, some other application, who knows how, would be able to steal it easily. So again, use a password manager, um, store it somewhere securely. Here on the left, we can see our nodes um, public key. Um, we can enable the autopilot, which is useful if we want to run a routing node. We haven't forwarded any payments yet, but once we do, we'll be able to find them here um, and we'll be able to um, open channels in this view. Um, for example, if we choose this node, um, channel size, we can see their existing channel sizes. So they seem to have a lot of channels with exactly like 1 million sats. Um, we can see their fee distribution. Um, so their fees uh, tend to be here on the lower end and kind of gives us a suggestion for, um, for how high we want these fees to be. Um, we can also choose how quickly we want that uh, transaction to confirm on chain. Uh, make sure that these transactions get on turn uh, confirmed on chain within two weeks, because otherwise the peer will forget about them and you have to force close them. Um, so if we had funds in our wallet, we would now simply be able to open this here. And to get funds into our wallet, um, we can, on here under receive, we have this ability to receive funds on chain, um, generate an address, and then we can just uh, send funds to it from your exchange, from your broker, from your mobile wallet, um, from Core, wherever you have um, these funds. Here, um, you're able to copy paste your uh, public key. Um, once you do have channels, once you do have balances, um, then all this will be populated. Um, pool is quite useful. Um, here we see um, kind of a list of all the um, channels we could buy. Um, so here would be the peers. We can buy a channel from any of these nodes um, for the cost here on the right side. Um, they have different lease durations. Some of them would buy for um, three months, some of them buy for two weeks. And once we have a, a proper routing node set up, we're also able to sell channels here. Um, loop um, is also very convenient if we want to um, fill our empty channels or empty our full channels. That can be quite a convenient way to uh, acquire inbound capacity um, or simply to be more um, chain efficient. The last thing we're going to check is we're going to check if we are synced um, to, um, to the graph. Um, so here with 14,000 nodes, um, we might be, but if we're not, yes, we are. We're synced to the graph and we're synced to chain. So now we have a fully uh, running uh, node. Um, Hannah, did you take the time? I did. That was awesome. Look, we did that in 13 minutes. That's amazing. So awesome work, Leo. We went from a entirely new Ubuntu server to a functioning LND lightning node in about 13 minutes, including a tour of Terminal Web and its various functionality. So that was awesome. Thank you again. The tools we used here was LitD. We run that, ran that integrated mode. Uh, we used Neutrino, and then we connected to Terminal Web using LNC and took a look at Loop and Pool and all the various things available via Terminal Web. We will add 
add uh, links to everything we discussed here in the description of the video. And as always, you can get a ton more information at docs.lightning.engineering. Thanks.